Happy St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day. Day. I'm Keith. I'm Dave. And tonight we thought we celebrate St. Patrick's Day by reviewing our first Irish whiskey down here in the Malton Man Cave. Coming and, up. And yes, I've already been pinched for my lack of green. <laughs> All right, so we're back. And tonight, as I said, we we're gonna be reviewing our first Irish whiskey in honor of St. Patrick's Day. So I thought we'd actually skip some of the maybe not so good Irish whiskeys and go to one that's generally held in high regard. So we're gonna be reviewing Red Best 12 Cast Strength. Um, have you had very many Irish whiskeys? Uh, just, I mean, like the most common ones that are at every bar. Jameson. And Jameson. And uh, funny story about Jameson, we go to, uh, my parent-in-laws have a, a lake house and we go to it every summer and the next door neighbor is like an elderly couple and this woman just, she will drink a whole thing of Jameson in the night sitting with you and you go well, home how, and how you're like, is she? Is she like a oh, woman? like a tiny little woman. She drinks a whole thing of Jameson. She might have a problem. <laughs> Is she Irish? I don't know. I don't know. It's not a problem. If it, you're Irish. It's like a thing. Like when it, now, whenever we go there, the girls just get trashed. Not. I'm just kidding. Didn't we get Hallie trashed. when we had the the wives? Jameson, yeah. We had the wives down. I got Hallie. Like, it was Jameson. the first time she actually had like a whiskey knee after she yeah, had a whiskey knee that's down exactly. here. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember yeah. her telling that story. So Red Breast is a single pot still Irish whiskey. Do you know what that means? Uh, they only use one pot. <laughs> yeah. So pot still, it just means you know, like the the stills that are in Scotland, they look like a a pot. Yeah. Okay. Um. So not all whiskey is distilled in you know like a squatty Some of, pot. Like yeah, yeah. There's different yeah. types. Um. So it is distilled in a pot still, mm -hmm. just like you know a lot of the scotches are. Um. Some of the differences though that make it a single pot still is that. Not only does it have malted barley, but it has unmalted barley, hmm. which kind of adds a very, very unique kind of green, I guess I don't even know how to describe the flavor. So it's got a little bit of malted and unmalted barley. Hmm. Do you know why they do it? It's so random. So back in the day, and I don't know why the British government did this, but when they taxed you know, on, on whiskey and certain, thing, certain things like that, they didn't tax it like afterwards. They had like a certain amount of tax on malted barley. So like when you malt the barley on the floor, they like tally it up and then How they, much you they tax it. So, you know, apparently they could get away with doing unmalted barley and they'd slip in like different ratios to save money. Hmm. And so, you know, after a while, you know, the British government changed how they, you know, did their taxes, but it just kind of stuck with the Irish and they never kind of switched. That's I mean, a... some, some, some Irish whiskeys, I don't, Things right. that do that, but, yeah, but still, uh, they're kind of known for many distilleries that still do the, yeah. the malted barley. Yeah. Huh. So, Red Breast, like many Irish whiskeys, but not all Irish whiskeys, is distilled just like the Irish, <laughs> yeah. not it's... to pay taxes. I'm just kidding, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. And Red Breast is, and many Irish distilleries, are known for being triple distilled. Hmm. Not all Irish whiskeys are triple distilled, but they're kind of known for a good majority of them are triple distilled. So this one, this particular beauty is at cast strength. It is non-chill filtered. It has no color added. And I believe, let's see, it comes in at 57.2% ABV and is batch number B116. Quick, quick question. Did Irish whiskey come up at kind of the same time as Scotch whiskey? Like, did they, did they communicate? Did this... You know, actually, with the earliest records indicate that actually it was started, whiskey was in Ireland first and then came over to Scotland, I think through monks. I think like one of the earliest records, and I actually <laughs> didn't even do my research, so let's see if I remember everything. There was a, a record, and I don't remember the year, of like a monk talking about the Aquavitae, the water of life, and there was like a record of like the sale Shout or something out, like Aquavitae. that. <laughs> Shout out, Roy. Roy. <laughs> Very original. So, yeah, actually the Irish started at first, and I guess the Scotch perfected, at least in many people's eyes. Some right. people are diehard Irish whiskeys, and you know what? 
This is a pretty dang good it's Irish whiskey. It's pretty darn so good. If our Irish whiskey was this good, call me a fan. So, as I said, red breast, non colored, non filtered, cast strength. And there was one more fun fact that I wanted to talk about this. The cast maturation, I believe, and I'm not 100%, but I believe doing research, um, I have it on good authority that it is 70% bourbon barrels and 25% um, sherry, um, sherry butts. And when you taste this, mm -hmm. I think all 25% of those were first fill sherry butts. So, I mean, this is one of the boldest, most jam packed amounts of flavor I've ever had in a whiskey. It was busy. So, you're not stealing my lines. Without further ado. Without further ado. Let's get into some whiskey. Hey, sometimes, sometimes I get, a, you get all the good. You don't, you get all the I good. I get the little, lines. Dude. I know, you get I all get the, the good lines. I get the punch lines. <laughs> I'm just a character actor. You're a leading man. Dave was the funny guy growing up in high school. I had to be. I had, uh, I had a bad face. <laughs> <laughs> My face betrayed me. And it, me and Dave, it, there was me, a war. <laughs> me and Dave both had pretty bad acne. <laughs> Some of us escaped a little bit better than others. Shout out Sarah Bear. <laughs> Shout out Dave Weiser face chapped. <laughs> it's not my fault. Grimace. <laughs> So, so bad. So, so you gotta be funny. You gotta be funny because uh, you gotta be quick or the other guy is gonna, what is it, psychologically they're gonna hurt you before yeah. you hurt them or, or make them laugh. At least that's how it's kind of gone about with bullying and I oh, wish it wasn't like that. So what do you get on the nose? Right off the bat. Hmm. I, and part of it's probably the strength of mm. it for me. Um, but mm. apple cider vinegar. And you might think nope. that that is a strange note or that that's not a good flavor. But I personally, I like vinegar. Um, I like salt and vinegar chips. I like vinegar on my, my, my chips or my french fries. Salt and vinegar chips. I just bashed a oh, whole they're so bag good. two nights ago. Yeah. The only problem with that when you eat a whole bag, the vinegar like literally oh. it eats like the lining of your, yeah, your it's mouth. You're in a it's sad, like, the you're next in two a, days afterwards, you're like peeling You're your in a lips sad off. state of affairs. So apple cider vinegar, uh, and then the next one was salted chocolate pretzels. It just reminded me of a a bowl of salted chocolate pretzels. And then uh, I have a toy chest that my son now has. My grandfather made it for me when I was a kid, and it's probably made out of a pretty strong wood. I would imagine it's made out of oak, and that's I, I wrote an oak toy chest, but it reminds me of opening up the toy chest when I was a kid, and now whenever my son and I am playing together, that evokes that memory for me. So, I already added a little water, and I would advise, I mean, always taste it first, just to see if you, you like it without water, and I do like it without water. But this is one, I would advise if you really wanna get the most flavor out of it, to put some, put some water in. Um, and it does really open it up, because it is, a bold, bold, bold whiskey. Would you say like this is one of the most oh, yeah. intense whiskeys you've there ever had? There is so much, and I had to, I had to sit there for a second because there was so much going on. Um, what's the age? What's the age of this? Twelve. Twelve years. Man, I can't imagine whiskey getting more f complex than. I mean, it's pretty complex whiskey. Yeah. So I get on the nose. The first thing I put was a huge kick of butter toffee. And I think I put buttered and yeah. creamy like five or six times in my yeah. notes. Um, a little bit of floral buttercups. Fruit cup juice, you know, like the little yeah. fruit cups you get, when, you know, for your kids. Yep. And just like if you put your nose in it with all the, the syrup and all the different fruits. A little bit of a sweet maltiness and like the slightest hint of lemon tang. Candied almonds and cashews. A weird note, and I, I've got this on one or two other whiskeys, but a little bit of chai. Like some like the spiciness that you would get yeah. in chai. Yeah, I got you. I never could get into chai tea. Really? Yeah. I, and I worked at a coffee shop and I made chai all the time. I know, I mean... It's, I think it's kind of considered like more more women get it, but I love it. <laughs> yeah, you would. I do. I like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an equal opportunity employer. I like girly drinks. Oh, me too. 
I like me a little pina colada. <coughs> Like a little chai tea, a little... Uh, picture this. Ice caramel uh, macchiato. 21-year-old uh, Keith and Dave yeah. by themselves in a hot tub drinking... Smirnoff. Smirnoff. <laughs> Sugary Smirnoff. <laughs> Just like praying that like girls will come over. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> hey, you want to come over to the hot tub? We've got Smirnoff. And one of the best notes, I get an amazing like caramelized banana note. And I would say... Um, I don't, you've never had any other red breast. I would say red breast specifically. I don't know about other Irish whiskeys because I haven't really ventured into a lot of Irish whiskeys other than like Jameson and a mm -hmm. few other. Um, I don't know if it's like the unmalted barley, but I really get banana notes in every red breast I've ever had. Yeah. And it's really good. Yeah, you're right on with that banana note. Again, buttered banana nut bread. Banana <laughs> note. <laughs> Cinnamon, like some kind of men's cologne. I'm, I don't even know what kind or I can't like narrow it down. <laughs> and then lastly, kind of like if you were like to walk into like a donut shop. Yeah. Like the sweet, like Yeah, pastry, just the aroma of donut yep. dough. Stuffed bacon, sugar, sugar, hot sugar. Yep. Hot buttery sugar. What do you get on the palate? I wrote apple cider vinegar again, but Definitely not as prevalent. Um, my my second one was kind of generic. It, going along the lines of your fruit cup, the canned sugary uh, fruit kind of taste. Um, cinnamon, oak is in there. And then I wanted to... Um, a pie with... How I would describe it is a fruit pie with a very sugary buttered top to it is the the oh. taste in my mouth um i can the, see that yeah so the first thing i put and this is absolutely my favorite dessert creamy banana fosters cheesecake mm. again the banana <laughs> but i really get a lot of bananas banana note you're right uh you're right about banana i about right we hear it yeah Again, like the thick fruit cup juice, like syrup again, like literally, because it, it being a high ca cast strength and non chill filtered, it is really, really like coating, like syrup. Um, cinnamon, and then a little bit of like candied cashews mm. again, really like sweet candied dough. Again, creamy, caramel and toffee, banana nut bread, like, and a little bit of copper metallic taste. And when you said something earlier about it being kind of hot, um, I mean, obviously it's a cast strength whiskey. Right. It is 12 year old, you know, so it's not like super young, which a lot of times on younger whiskeys, it can be like extra hot. But I think maybe the unmalted barley also kind of gives it a a little bit rougher. Yeah. On top of that, you know, I don't know. I mean, this is an amazing whiskey, and you're going to hear in a second my score. But I do think maybe this is a little bit hotter than I would have expected. Maybe, like, they didn't quite get the, the middle cut mm. quite right. Yeah. Now, this is an amazing whiskey, but it just does seem a little extra hot, even for a 12 cast drink. Yeah. Last but not least, cherry cola. When you add water, cherry cola on the palate. Oatmeal, of all things, and a little bit of brown sugar and white pepper. Boom. What about the finish? Hmm. I was thinking that kind of leaves, uh, and it's probably that heat that you were talking about. Kind of a spicy note at the end, and it might be that metallic or that, that heat that, that you were talking about. I feel like it's a medium finish. Um, yeah. It 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 doesn't stick around too long. Um, it's weird the it's the flavor, like the good flavor. It's there and then it goes away. But I still feel like there's some alcohol lingering for a while. Yeah, I can like, feel it. The real pleasant like flavors goes away. It, yeah, it feels it feels like you've just. Does taken that make a shot. sense at all? It, it, I don't even know. I didn't put that in my notes. So I just noticed that right now as you're saying that. Yeah. I, I just feel like it, uh, the flavor goes away, but it definitely, definitely stays with you. Something stays with you. <laughs>
<laughs> the ghost of, of like, alcohol past. Syrupy alcohol without any flavor. Yeah. <laughs> like you just know you had a ton of alcohol and it's still like there, but then the flavor just goes away. Vodka-ish. Yeah. So I would say just kind of moderate. You know, it's not like a really long finish. Like you said, it goes away, but then you can still kind of taste some. Yeah, alcohol. you still know that you've yeah. been drinking it. Again, I get like creamy bananas, foster cheesecake for that little bit that you have it. Um, fruit cup syrup, brown sugar, banana nut bread again, and just a little bit like sweet maltiness. Yeah. It's pretty good stuff. Yeah. What are you going to give? Malted Man Cave score, what are you going to give it? Um, I'm going to give this a very healthy, robust... Um, 88 out of 100. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to switch it because we can't do like three in a row getting the same score. Are I was you gonna serious? Give it 88, so. Oh, no, no. Leave I'm going to do, whole, I'm gonna do 88 I want you to plus, leave or this minus, whole, plus or minus one. Leave this whole oh, thing. Oh, I'm cutting in. it out. No, no. Cutting it. No, no, no. We literally. Yeah, it is an 88. Like, yeah. You're going to think we're shenanigans. Like, we're it's really, not shenanigans. Um, shenanigans. But no, no, no. Um, if, yeah, if the, it's good. If the it's finish good. was a little bit longer, and if that little bit of hotness yeah. wasn't in there, it probably it could even get into the '90s territory. It's that much flavor, and and that good. But a little bit of hotness, and the finish isn't quite as good as I would think. Um, yeah, that's what takes you down a couple notches. So, 80 out of 100. Um, go out and find some if you can find it. I got really lucky and found this at Wine Works in Springfield. Really? And it's pretty rare. There's people online giving this like 94, 95 out of 100. Like people that I respect that I've watched review it. And I can see it. Um, I can see those kind of reviews, especially if you, if, if you like that. And maybe this was a so hot... good. And, and Irish whiskey is kind of a, a certain unique taste to it. Either you could have know, a different kind of love it or maybe don't necessarily like it as much. And I do think maybe this batch is a little bit hotter maybe than other ones. So 80 out of 100. If you find it, it is um, Malted Man Cave mm -hmm. approved. Question of the night. Oh yeah, came from Roy at Aquavite. Do you wanna? Do you remember what it was? Yeah, he was asking uh, what <clears throat> my whiskey journey. What has it um, benefited me as far as food appreciating? Just smell, like because or you know, our smells. Yeah, but but as we get into taste, nosing it, smells. What are we, um, what has changed and... How uh, has it affected the way that we experience smells in nature, smells in food, wine? You know, because before whiskey, I didn't just go around like, mm, I get notes. Yeah. And now I notice I do it when I'm like drinking beer, you yeah. know, wine, obviously, um, which I never did. People probably think I'm so weird when I'm out to dinner because not... Not <laughs> the majority of the population, you know, doesn't like nose and gets the finish. And, oh yeah, you know, and all that. They're and, there like, for the effect and the the taste yeah. while it's going down. And even when when we had poker the other night, we got eight people over. Um, I mean, I don't care. I'm gonna do what I want no matter what. But I kind of like I just catch myself. I'm like, they're probably like, why like, am I why like, is he why nosing he this and like yeah. Um, so you want to lead off? Um, yeah, well, just just what you were talking about. I, I find myself definitely, um, when I am experiencing something different um, or something that I've always experienced, and whether it's food, whether it's uh, some little Debbie cake that a, a patient brought me that I ate reminded me of some I forget what what it was uh, whiskey we did yeah one of the whiskeys we did and it was just the it, was that sugary, it was that sugary uh, um, fake kind of, not it was it was not a good uh, <laughs> like kind of uh, the Dalmore 12 maybe <laughs> yeah the manufactured yeah. yes yes like that's sugar what substitute that's, that's what it was the Dalmore 12 Dalmore I was just watching hello <laughs> how are you how do you do? <laughs> How do you do? Good. <laughs> um, um, yeah, Downmore's never going to send us whiskeys. <laughs> man down. We're, we're off the list from Downmore. Man down, Downmore. <laughs> they will never send um, us. But no, just uh, I definitely find myself, um, and also too, when I am, uh, other than whiskey, when I'm just doing anything, I feel like I am more prone to be able to take some time to fully understand the flavor or scent profile of what is around me yeah i would definitely say i mean i don't have anything great or original to yeah. say but i definitely slow down with a lot more just when i'm out in nature when i'm like literally, yeah you know food 
I kind of didn't do it for a long time because when I was in grad school, there's this new thing in, in mental health and it's kind of, you know, going away from the Western model of medicine and kind of like bringing in Eastern medicine in, you know, like acupuncture and mindful meditation. And literally there was one class that I took in grad school and one of my professors, she's awesome. Um, but you know, she was like Buddhist and she was like really big into it. And it really does help certain people. If you really do really try yeah. um, meditation and, um, relaxation, breathing, like it is proven, like they've done brain scans and literally like the areas of your brain associated with stress, um, shrink. Yeah. And it's just kind of giving your brain a time out from all the stress, especially, you know, in Western lifestyle. It's so much, we, you know, we live to work, not work to work yeah. to live. Yeah. Um, but for a whole I kid you not, six hours, Dave, we had to meditate and like literally for, for our lunch break, we had to sit there and mindfully eat and take it in. <laughs> Say, what does flavors. this, what does this feel like? <laughs> now I will never appreciate smell and taste quite that much, but it has made me slow down a little bit. Yeah. With just pretty much everything in life. Um, so Red Breast 12, go out and get you some. Thank you guys as always. Like, subscribe, cilantro.